Bonjour, good morning. I hope you have an amazing day. My day starts as usual and so often and too often with an email from Apple. Because why not? And I don't make these videos here to copy Louis Rossman or something. I make these videos because I think this is really complete and utter bullshit. Not to copy here someone or hate Apple unnecessarily. So first of all, got an email, of course, Sander Bird says that to protect our privacy, Sander Bird has blocked remote content of this image. Here's some wonderful image, so much to Apple honoring users' privacy, maybe not. So remote content of this message that it looks nice. Of course, some logo here and there, because this is what email is in 2019. And then what is this about? Why do I need to make this video? Because this is really why Apple is losing me completely. Dear developer, yeah, dear Apple, welcome. We're working with developers. Wait, working with developers? Since when have you ever been working with us? Okay, to create a safer Mac user experience through the process where all software, where, whether distributed on the App Store or outside of it, is signed or notarized by Apple. We are signing this bullshit already for years for too many years. And since the announcement of this notarized apps, I had not really understanding what this bloody shit is about. And I still don't really know, but more to this uh, later in a minute. We require, so with the public release of macOS 10, 14, 5, by the way, version numbers, right? 10, 14, 5, but okay, fine. We require that all developers create developer ID certificates for the first time notarize their apps. So with this sentence, I have completely no idea what they want to tell me. That sounds a little bit like only for developer ID certificates of developers creating them for the first time. So does it affect us or not? Because we have them already for, I don't know, seven years or so. So thank you very much for being so super clear that we still don't know what this is about because uh, as they write here for the first time notarize their apps, but hmm, what does it mean? Or does it also affect us the next time our certificate expires and we need to get a new one? I have no idea. Why can they not write this here clearly? Okay, fine. This will help give users more confidence that the software they download and run, no matter where they get it from, is not malware by showing a more streamlined, streamlined gatekeeper experience. In addition, we've made the following enhancements to the notarization process. So, I mean, first of all, why develop safe software like some more amazing microkernel? Of course, everything is insecure and then just, let's just notarize it. Already this notarize, I really hate this name. And what is this different from signing them? They already required applications to be signed, digitally signed for many years already. Otherwise, people need to disable the security measurements there in the settings and allow unsigned apps. And for me, enlighten me, I've still not found any technical reason. The only thing I could imagine is what I thought, this is because Apple is reviewing, I mean, reviewing, not notarizing, but reviewing apps for distribution in the App Store, which I also don't like, but whatever. I've made already two emails. We have so many problems. We upload something, it's rejected trying to access the context, which we don't, and bullshit, our app was rejected for having a screenshot of an Apple letter. We used, we thought it's nice, it looks nice, some official, it was just welcome to the Apple developer membership seven years ago, and our Jeb app was rejected for using confidential material or some utter bullshit, whatever. Anyway, then, okay, then we used just our company letter in the screenshot looked better anyway, so much to having some officially looking nice Apple screenshot, but whatever. And things like this also, they did not allow us to put there a link to test our software for free from our website. This was censored for promoting, downloading, side loading and purchasing outside of the App Store. Well done for the user experience. And I think I could understand if this notarization is like their review, but why not call it review and not notarization? Because Coming to the point in one minute, I still have no idea what this notarization bullshit even is. It is not explained here anywhere. And yeah, so legacy code is fully supported. So what does it mean? What does legacy code, le legacy code is fully supported? What does it mean? I have no idea. Why can companies not clearly write, write what they mean with this? Even if it contains unsigned binaries, like wait, what? 
what is this notarization doing if these binaries are not signed and whatever? While new software and updates require proper signatures in order to be notarized, you can upload your existing software as it. How should this work and how does this differ? How does existing software differ from new software and how do they even want to recognize it? Is this just with this bundle ID like com exa code exact scan? This bundle ID used for everything? I have no idea. Why can they not write this? I have no idea even having read a couple of documents already after this bloody keynote or something. I have no idea. Why can they not write it? Existing software is this, legacy software is this. I have no idea what it should be. Um, apps with plug-in ecosystems are better supported. How, why, they could have mentioned, but they don't. Stapler support supports all type of bundles and plugins. Whatever stapler is, probably some notarization code signing binary, I guess. Would be nice if they mentioned this, probably I should guess their marketing names for bullshit, but whatever. Xcode 10.2 adds secure timestamps and other code signing options required by the notary service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so code signing is notary service is just some more fancy timestamp code signing or what would have been nice if they explained it more. Read the documents, documentation has also been improved. Yeah, improved. I mean, thank you. This email could already have an improvement because it doesn't give me any much information whatsoever at all. We encourage you to take a look at, yeah, thank you to encourage me wasting my time reading more of this bloody bullshit that I've already read months ago and I did not understand what this even should be about. And uh, we have drop frames because apparently Mac Mini also sucks matching the theme. So here's some documents they linked in this email. And this document, I will probably not read it here in full unless you want to watch me here rambling about this Apple bullshit. And this article is not more specific than this bloody email. Notarizing gives users more confidence. I mean, more confidence. It was already that in the App Store was malware viruses because Apple just signs everything. They only check that you don't promote selling in your own App Store. They only check that it's not accessing the user's contact, which we didn't and they still thought we do maybe for accessing some preferences uh, there that were not our bundle ID for some scanner drive or whatnot. And then everything not in uh, library preferences is accessing the context or some bullshit as some other YouTube user commented here on our video, maybe. So, and uh, been checked by Apple for malicious components. How? It did already not work with code signing. They code sign everything. If it is malicious or not, how should they even Check this. It is, they do not review the source. And obviously, if you have an application with 100,000 lines of code, how should Apple even review the sources, which they already do not do? So this is just some code signing, some binary code signing. So they just run it, look on the UI and uh, on the file IO access pattern, this is sandbox or not. And we will. this will not solve anything. It only makes developing developers annoyed developing more annoying, um, waste everyone's time with this notarization bullshit that I now need to look. The one consequence of this is that we need to use the latest Xcode, which we have problems with. Not only does the UI suck majorly, completely unusable bullshit. Also, we support lo uh, later older macOS versions for customers who still run it. We have plenty of commercial customers who for one reason or the other cannot upgrade their macOS because then their commercial software of their printing or whatever workflow, you know, all this fancy expensive Adobe and whatnot software that people invest tons of money with uh, in and then it doesn't work with some macOS update for whatsoever reason. And beside I in general find also there are people with older Macs, right? I mean, they constantly remove older Macs support from new macOS. So making it harder for us to support people on older Macs and macOS versions, wasting our time, especially developing with this. I completely hate the new UI, completely unusable bullshit for me, also slow as a uh, whatever. Um, and so, it's an, so here is one clue. The Apple notary service is an automated system that scans your software for malicious content, checks for code signing issues. Ah. So it's just a little bit more improved code signing. Why don't you call it then code signing 
And why do you need to make, make so many new requirements for us using new Xcode versions, new notarization bullshit whatsoever if it's not to force people on new Xcode versions, if it's just some scanning automated process for malicious co content. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So just as I thought, some automatic checking because obviously with the 100,000 apps there or even more of this, all this bullshit of light versions of free versions of pay Mium or whatever the name for this was um, versions and um, so Apple obviously even with huge workforce probably outsourced uh, somewhere in countries where it's cheap knowing Apple this is still automated just some scanning like some virus scanner so thank you very much Apple for wasting our time for some improved virus scanning kind of bullshit there on your servers why make so much fuss why can you not just integrate this in your regular code signing and this also means obviously we already upload all the binaries to Apple so this means you cannot just send an update to the user like with the app store we fix something for user scanner doesn't work a new scanner on the market or whatever the user may actually find a real bug or a mac os bug that we need to work around for all the hundred bucks we already have work around it and from file safe panels not showing for usb issues uh, universal request brokers there this usb oops not oops not transferring and such getting stuck with the amazing macOS USB subsystem. Thank you very much for that. Also, Apple, well done. Completely peak bug free. And yeah, so it's some glorified virus scanning bullshit. You all know probably how amazing virus scanners work. Also, so you write a virus, you write a malware, you send it to Apple, it's not recognized, it's notarized. Stop this code signing and notarization bullshit. Like probably 90, over 90% of all security researchers tell you that code signing is bullshit write secure apps and operating systems and UIs and desktop environments but this code signing you sign it you can always sign it it is always valid but so here here's some other bullshit does not give you here more specifics except yeah enable code signing so again you need to use the latest uh, link against macOS 10.9 or later SDK probably this if you want to use this obviously Xcode 10 because why should you be allowed to use an earlier Xcode version and I still do not know if this applies to our apps or not because I do not understand the sentence here of leg legacy apps and new here for and again can is my English better than Apple's is this some intern has written this and they sent it out like this I have really this is a multi-billion dollar company and they cannot write clear emails where was it written here with the public release? Require all developers creating a developer ID certificate for the first time. I have no idea. Maybe that's not us. I don't know. I also don't understand how they want to differentiate this. Only developer ID older than something. So yeah, this is just a regular Apple bullshit. I hope you learned something, but probably not. And this is why I really get depressive. I cannot see this stuff anymore since six years. Each year I get here more bullshit. I do not want to deal with notarization bullshit. We already signed it. We already sent it to Apple. This, by the, by the way, half of the time it fails. I see this will fail even more often. And by the way, I can also not code sign without internet, right? I sit at a customer. I need to either ask for Wi-Fi or code sign over LTE, send our 18 megabyte, well, only, I mean, I can be thankful that our exact scan is only 18 megabyte compressed and not 500 and send 18 megabyte over LTE to Apple servers just to have it consigned to give it to a customer if I'm there on site and bullshit like this unless they allow me to plug in an Ethernet cable with an amazing Ethernet dongle or um, use their Wi-Fi which most customers also not the most amazed with. So yeah, also by the way if I uh, work on a plane I obviously on I had this already when code signing was new seven years ago I wanted to continue working and I was wondering why I can't build in a plane until I realized wait a second this code signing obviously uh, it, uh, well obviously this code signing needs a timestamp to sign this with the time and that you can't use an invalid time like date in the past or future to make this certificate valid they make a timestamp they get the timestamp from Apple servers so this code signing does not work in an airplane or wherever um, where you don't have internet 
And then since then I changed our debug builds obviously not to code sign. So all our internal debug builds obviously are not code sign to uh, click on build in a train, airplane or wherever you might be. So yeah, everything is annoying in my opinion. This makes me really sad why I really have no words for the software industry anymore. It's not getting better, it's only getting more annoying. And uh, speaking of annoying, 3000 drop frames, 13% because ob um, obviously 50 Mbit Vodafone cable is not enough to live stream. Thumbs up for all this amazement in the morning. Now I need to make my first coffee, otherwise I don't survive this bullshit. I hope you learned something from this interesting and probably I understood you want to see more coding videos, but I also want to share you the frustrating experience of commercial software development, well, commercial and commercial, but yeah, this is really and now I read this already. I spent already two hours reading this some months ago, going over this email, wondering, scratching my head, and I still don't know. I need to spend no more time, waste my time. And this, by the way, Apple only take 30% of our profit there in the App Store, but not compensate me for all our time lost and spent with this bullshit. Not to mention all the apps we need to send for real review with rejected with screenshot not approved, text not approved, link to a free try down. By the way, Apple is caring for the user with forbidding free trial downloads. Amazing stuff. So yeah, have a good day and I hope to see you soon for more amazing videos to come.